Hello, my name is Flutus Poston, and I appreciate you tuning in today to talk about a topic I call the new frontier with inside of cybersecurity. As we continue to check the news daily on our phones, laptops, or even turning on the morning news as we prepare for the day, we've heard and seen that the threat landscape has changed dramatically in the recent years. With a 200% surge in sophisticated attacks since 2021 alone, organizations thus need to adapt and adopt advanced detection with risk mitigation strategies to combat these emerging security threats. Think about how threat detection systems work, how they can identify and help your security operations respond to threats in the modern digital world. Taking the graphic I have here on the slide, the red alert nodes represent a critical need for organizations to stay vigilant and proactive in their cybersecurity efforts. So let's dive in now. Let's learn together and tackle this new frontier head on. So let's talk about a new acronym that many of us may be discussing our organizations today, DDR. DDR stands for Data Detection and Response. This is a comprehensive security solution that proactively monitors your data environment to help you detect and respond to threats in real time. DDR uses advanced analytics to continuously scan for anomalies activity, quickly identifying potential security breaches. Because DDR is real time, it allows you to determine if your users are trying to copy and paste data. It allows you to understand the global threat intelligence to recognize known threat signatures and malicious patterns, giving you an added layer of protection. So when a threat is detected, DDR can automatically contain the issue before any sensitive data is compromised thus minimizing impact and damage to your organization. With this multi-layered approach of real-time detection, threat intelligence, and rapid response, your organization is implementing critical safeguards to help protect your digital assets. So take a few moments to make sure that you've got proper data labeling, data classification, and that you understand even just a little bit how each of your line of businesses interact with the data that's in their SaaS solutions, their software as a service, the data that sits on their endpoints, either on their Macs or Windows, and how that data can move around in your environment. Digital data is something we have to protect as we're no longer relying on printed copies. So let's dive in and learn more about protecting critical information with inside of our organizations. So now that we've introduced this data detection response, let's talk about how context-aware is important. What is, what is context-aware risk identification? It's a, an approach that combines AI analytics with user behavior and device context to proactively identify potential risk. The use of AI analytics uses machine learning to evaluate a wide array of risk factors going beyond traditional rule-based systems. Next, user behavior is analyzed and compared against established baselines to detect anomalies that could signal a security threat within inside of your environment. Now moving down to the device level. Device context, including the location, the time, the health of the device, is also taken into account to provide a more comprehensive risk assessment. So as organizations continue to integrate all the different variable systems in their environment, you can focus on these three key elements to help gain a deeper understanding of your respective risk landscape, thus allowing your security teams to respond more effectively to the evolving threats. So again, it's now more important than ever to have context about the data that we are creating, storing, and sharing both inside of the corporate network 
your on-prem and your SaaS networks, your software as a service, as you're moving data in and out of OneDrive, SharePoint, Google Workspace, Salesforce, Alassian, Tableau, wherever you're moving this data around, it's important to have the context of what the data is, who should have access to it, and it's time to live. So reflect on that now as we go deeper in to understanding how the new frontier of cybersecurity is here to help identify and protect all digital assets. So we've talked on the last couple slides about data detection and context risk awareness. But let's now talk about some benefits of being able to do data detection. Some of the key benefits we can think about is threat dwell time reduction. According to the IBM Security Report in 2024, data detection and response can and will reduce dwell time up to 78%. Continuous 24-7 monitoring by staffing, automation, machine learning, agentic AI is providing no gaps in your security coverage so that your organization can quickly and timely respond to the threats, thus leading to a 3x faster response time. Compared to traditional security methods, data detection and response, solutions, architecture, and design enables a much quicker response to incidents. So again, our goal as practitioners and leaders is to reduce the dwell time in our environments. And with DDR, we have the ability to respond because now we have context of where the data is, where the data moves, when it moves, how it moves, and the different types of components of how your users interact with it. Thus allowing a 24-7, 365 coverage to allow you to quickly and timely know when a data has been copied outside of your network, has been shared inappropriately, giving strength to the legacy data loss prevention or data leakage that we've talked about for years. Allowing your stock and incident response teams to quickly and effectively triage, detect and respond to data movement to build a better resiliency with inside of your organization. So we just talked about DDR benefits. Let's talk about the power that comes with having contextual awareness. It allows your organization to reduce alert fatigue for your security operations center by up to 60% through fewer false positives. If you're like me and you've worked a queue, false positive fatigue causes burnout. So this is important to allow systems such as DDR with context awareness to help weed out the false positives, thus allowing focused security efforts on the highest risk activities and threats. It's imperative to understand your threat landscape, which allows organizations to optimize security resource allocation by directly staffing where they're needed the most. By allowing you to use adaptive defenses that evolve with your organization as attack techniques change, keeping your organization protected. So remember, your goal here is to drive efficiency, effectiveness, and reduce the fatigue that comes from high volume, false positives, and missing potential real threats as your analysts are process continuously processing low fidelity or false positive alerts, giving you the proper resources and allocation to focus on projects, engineering, or true positives to better protect your organization from cyber attacks. So now let's dive into a few real world success stories. These real world success stories demonstrate the power of cybersecurity solutions in action. 
first, let's talk about a financial institute who was able to quickly stop a multi-million dollar phishing fraud attempt by detecting unusual data access patterns and automatically blocking the exfiltration. Next, a healthcare provider identified an insider threat accessing patient records outside their normal patterns. With context-aware system flagging the high-risk behavior despite valid credentials. And lastly, think about a Fortune 500 company where the solution reduced their security incident response time from six hours down to two hours. You heard me. From six hours to two hours. With automatic containment of compromised endpoints before lateral movement. Occur. These examples show how advanced analytics and automated response capabilities from DDR and context awareness can provide robust protections against a range of cybersecurity threats. So I've named a few examples, and now I'll give you a personal one. When you're able to use behavior analytics to determine that Fleetus is not normally coming in to, let's just say, Salesforce at 3 a.m. Eastern time on Saturdays. Is there a reason I could come in there at 3 a.m. on Saturday? Maybe. But I'm a security operations manager who should not be accessing Salesforce first, so likely I'm over-provisioned and not having this privilege. But let's just say I did have a right to be in there. If I've never came in from an IP that's outside of where I normally have logged in or where I just authenticated in from intra octa or ping, it's a red flag. You have enough heuristics to determine that I should not be accessing this data at 3 a.m. from an IP that's not related to where I just or have authenticated in via my identity provider, thus allowing you to quickly and effectively block my access to restricted data, such as the financial or customer data that's inside of Salesforce. Next, let's dive into some best practices when you're thinking and planning to implement. The key success for implementation is following three best practices during integration, training, and tuning. First, integration. Your organization need to combine these solutions with your existing endpoint detection and response or XDR platform tools to get a full benefit. Because by layering these defenses, you're giving your security operations center a layered approach to track pre-mortem and post-mortem activities when the alert fires. Next is training. It's critical that the security team develops expertise and contextual analysis to get the most out of the data that they're receiving from a data detection and response tool that's using contextual risk assessments to make its decisions, thus allowing them to tune. Tuning isn't a set and forget. It's not a plug and play. You will need to continuously refine the detection algorithms to optimize performance and minimize false positives and negative impacts to your lines of businesses that could cause downstream impacts thus causing your business time and money. So by focusing on these three areas, your organization can ensure that this new solution is integrated seamlessly into their security stack, allowing for maximum impact. So again, this isn't a set and forget. It needs to be tuned. You need to have benchmarking. And it's important to take time to learn your environment and tune accordingly to make sure that what you're getting from these solutions aligns with the data that's inside of your scene, your data lakes, your visualization tools to give your team the ability to make an educated and timely decision when the alert fires or when they're in the middle of doing a threat hunting analysis. So now let's wrap it all up with some key takeaways and a path forward. 
you've heard me now a couple times talk about the importance of essential tools such as data detection and response with context awareness as must-haves in modern security. I have hope I've proven out the results from these solutions, including quantifiable reductions in breach, risk, and response times. Organizations' next steps are to pilot with top vendors, measure the return on the investment, and scale the implementation across the organization to get timely visibility detections while improving your security posture and ultimately the security culture of your organization. With these steps, you'll be able to continue to strengthen your security posture, thus protecting against the evolving threats. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation as this is a topic that's come up in a few circles that I've walked in recently. I've sat down and discussed the importance of more than just data loss prevention and data leakage and moving into using data as part of your detection and response. As we've been doing endpoint detection and response and then extended detection and response and other tools that we can talk about in future presentations is also doing an identity detection and response. As you can see, the underlying story here is we have to be able to detect and respond to an array, an array of different events in our organization. And they're not all the traditional AV or endpoint detections that comes from files being downloaded, phishing emails being clicked, software being installed. But now it's how do we manage the data that's moving around our laptops, our mobile devices such as phones and tablets, to the now residing outside of our four walls in third-party software. Another topic that's imperative for us to think about is the third-party risk management and supply chain attacks, as I've covered in previous presentations. So I'd like you to think about these, use this topic as a food for thought. So when you're having budget meetings, talking with your peers or your leadership about what's next to strengthen your security organization by enhancing your security posture and evolving your security culture into one that's there to enable your organization to stand apart and be able to detect and respond to the modern threat of data resilience and data privacy and data protection as we do not want to lose customer data, healthcare data, or any PHI or PII, so public health or private health information, personal identifiable information, as I keep using acronyms. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please follow my weekly Food for Thoughts, where I continue to challenge some more topics. And please tune into my Saturday SIP for Cybersecurity podcast, where again, I apply the same techniques that we're talking about here of protecting the data, even when we're not physically working on the weekends. So as always, until next time, stay safe and stay secure, everyone.